I guess I'll go ahead and start uh, getting into sure. the questions. Uh, this is I'm here with uh, my old professor uh, Derek Gardner uh, talking about his recent release, uh, "Still I Rise." Uh, this is for yes, Oki yes. Magazine, and so thank you again for doing this, my man. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure, man. Thank you for having me. Yes, yeah, so this is uh, the maestro here. I own uh, a great amount of. Uh, of uh, debt for all the stuff he taught me when I was at Michigan State about writing and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, boy, yeah, you was well. See, your 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 pen was running dry back then. Oh right. you know, <laughs> yeah, right. Writing up some stuff back then, boy. Uh, yeah, trying to keep up with you, Meister. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, so man. so the album dropped. Uh, was it J July tenth? Correct. Is that yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And uh, how how's it been going so far? Man, it's been going wonderful. It really has been. Um, it's getting a, it's getting a lot of really good traction. Uh, I have a great uh, marketing team uh, behind it that's, that's you know that's pushing it along, and uh, it seems to be um, reaching out to a lot of uh, the you know a lot of listeners. You know, so I'm getting some really great feedback and um, some. Uh, all the all the reviews have been really wonderful, and you know a lot of people are putting their ears on it. You know, so uh, so yeah, I'm 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 happy with uh, with how it's going. Oh, awesome! Man. I, yeah. I heard it. And I was like, yeah, that's that's Derek's right. right? <laughs> <laughs> that's some great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I was like, that, that's 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 my maestro right there. That's a professor. <laughs> oh man. And it was nice. I saw that uh, our, our mutual friend uh, Curtis Taylor was on there from, from MSU as well. So it was oh just... yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Old uh, old Spartan alumni. Yeah, yeah. 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 So it's a blast from the past. And then uh, yeah, yeah. I, I think that the drummer, um, I, I, his name slips my my mind at the moment. I don't hang out. Oh, with Northside. The... Curtis yeah, Northside. He's, yeah, he's he's a uh, he's in New York now. I see him from time to time. He's in New York now, right? Yeah, he's yeah. from the, he's from the program up here in Canada. Oh, okay, nice. It's our nice. program here, yeah. So, yeah. so this, uh, so the the uh, the personnel for this was kind of like a mixture of like the the past and present for you, right? Yep, yep. Uh, uh, definitely past and present, and uh, um, and uh, it was it was a uh, even more of a of a great uh, mix of of Canadian and U.S. Uh, jazz musicians. Um, uh, uh, quite a few of the members are. Our uh, local uh, uh, musicians here in Winnipeg, and uh, you know, play all over town. And um, then uh, the other musicians are um, from people I played with uh, in previous years when I was in New York: uh, Mark Gross, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Dixon on on uh, tenor saxophone, mm -hmm. uh, Mark Gross playing lead alto, and and of course my brother uh, playing lead trombone and. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, so we had like a, and then, you know, and even uh, in, in, like I mentioned earlier, I had Curtis Taylor come in from, uh, you know, from the, the Michigan State days. And yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, we had a really, a really great time and I uh, uh, had to pull in also, um, uh, you know, Curtis Northside on drums and Luke Selleck on bass, who are both, both from uh, graduates of our program here at University of Manitoba. Mm -hmm. And uh, and another uh, Winnipegger who lives in who used to live in New York, uh, uh, he lives in Detroit now. A pianist named Zen Zadravec. Okay. And, yeah, and he was in New York for for a long time, about at least twenty plus years uh, before he moved out to the the, the uh, Detroit area. Oh, I see. Yeah, oh. yeah, and right. uh, he brought in a powerhouse on uh, lead trumpet, um, Bijan Watson. Who's the uh, lead trumpeter with um, uh, Clayton Hamilton Jazz Orchestra and uh, formerly with uh, 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 Gerald uh, Gerald Wilson, mm -hmm. uh, Gerald Wilson, big man, and uh, so yeah, he's and you know uh, and this made his um, uh, uh, 
career, you know, uh, a lot of his career is out on the West Coast, you know, out, out in California, out in that area. But uh-huh. uh, yeah, he just came in and just uh, just lit a fire on all of us, you know. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. yeah, it gets cold up there, so you all could probably use some fire, right? Well, yeah, and we and we recorded in January too, so that was so we need <laughs> we needed the fire, man. <laughs> oh man, yeah, sir. That, that Michigan State was cold enough for me. I don't know if I can do. Canada. Oh. Uh, no, nah, Michigan, Michigan was nothing compared to this. <laughs> this, uh, this, uh, this is professional grade cold. Up really? Here. This is where the big boys hang out. Oh, you know, okay. Michigan was a nice orientation to get ready for this. <laughs> oh but, yeah. Uh, yeah, this is uh, they call it, this is the true north. <laughs> oh, okay, dig. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was afraid you say that. I was, uh, oh like, yeah. Yeah, so oh, if yeah. someone asked me to do a clinic, it, it might be like this. <laughs> it might be, it oh. might be a sky crawl. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Make sure that make sure that clinic is in July. Right, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah, I heard the album, man. It, it was it's a great ensemble. Um, I was gonna ask, um, so what what do you feel like this the recording means for yourself and like uh, the, the scene maybe in, in in Manitoba and I guess maybe just Canada in general, like this kind of. Uh, conglomerate of the U.S. and Canada and Canadian musicians coming together on this recording? Uh, well, yeah, it's a, uh, well, firstly for myself, uh, it, uh, it's a, it's a dream come true. I've always wanted to do uh, a big band project. And, uh, as you know, a, a, a big band is quite, uh, expensive to put together and really, uh, come out with a, um, with a, uh, a, 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 a spit shine product, you know, in the big band format. And my hat's off to uh, Manitoba Film and Music, uh, Canada Council for the, uh, for the Arts, uh, uh, University of Manitoba, and the Foundation, on, uh, Foundation Assisting Canadian Talent on Record, Factor. <laughs> That's okay. I, I, I wouldn't be able to get through that. So, oh, so yeah, I had, to, I had to think about it myself. Say, oh, what? That's why they use the uh, they they squeeze together. It's a factor. That's the name. <laughs> of it. So those those four those four funding agencies uh, financed uh, this recording and right. uh, made it possible to really put together um, an all star cast of uh, of musicians. And, um, and, you know, if you're going to do it, you got, you, you got to do it right. You know, you, yeah. and, uh, this, and this allowed, they allow for that to happen. And so with that, you know, Canada, um, was, you know, allowed for me to, to bring together that, that mix of, of musicians and, um, you know, say, here's something that's based out of Canada and this is what we're doing in Canada and, and, and out of, uh, nonetheless, out of Winnipeg, because you know most of you here are coming out of Canada, usually out of out of uh, maybe maybe Toronto or uh, Montreal, which has, a, which has a, an incredible uh, jazz festival. Uh, uh-huh. Montreal has uh, Toronto has their jazz festival every year, every summer as well, and uh-huh. even out in Vancouver. Those are the main uh, hubs that everybody thinks of for you know creative art and uh, particularly music. Uh, but here in the middle of the country in Winnipeg, man, there's a whole uh, history of music that's come out of Winnipeg. And so they're keeping that history alive and well by putting this, uh, allowing me to put this, this uh, recording project together. Oh, that's beautiful, man. It's, it's always good to, to receive that kind of project. I mean, um, I remember with my, my last CD, uh, that was I remember having to do that on my own and uh, never again. I, someone had you know, <laughs> funding on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. Even on a, even on a, on a small group level, man, it's it's a it's a Herculean effort. Yeah. You know, when you when you especially when you talk about self producing your own thing. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah, it's it's a, it's it's quite quite a mountainous task. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, so that, 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 I'm glad you got that because I mean the recording quality. I mean the, everything is it's a, it's a very polished product. So I'm, I'm very happy that you you got that, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so, what was the inspiration behind the album? Uh, but can you give us give us a little backstory as to like what was the, I guess maybe the overall theme with the, with the compositions and so on and so forth? Well, um, they the, the compositions just were 
they were just kind of sitting there on the shelf just collecting dust for a bunch of years, you know, and, uh, and, and, but I did, um, I did have, uh, another, uh, 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 program layout initially for the recording project. And then, well, I think one of the stipulations of one of the grants that I got was I couldn't do, uh, any, um, uh, pre-recorded music, uh, mu- music that that I uh, original music of my own that was pre-recorded, like on another on another uh, re- previous record, you know, and uh, so that cut out that cut out about you know maybe two or three of my two of my tunes, and then another I think another stipulation was they from another grant they wanted uh, no uh, pre-existing music, all original stuff. I said, oh man, so I. So I got to do all the original stuff. So that cut out about four or five of my tunes, and so uh-huh. I, had to, I had to get out the pen and start writing, man. You know, and <laughs> uh, so I, I started putting, it, developing some some things that I had uh, that was just on the back burner, and um, I was able to uh, get them ready for the for the recording date, and they just kind of came together uh, with like as far as like the um, the the title of the of the. The, the title of the of the CD is Still I Rise, and um, the title track, of course, the same um, the same na- name, and that was a tune that I was that I had had in the, in the back burner uh, for a few years, and once I once I had finished that tune, I said, you know that you know uh, you know Maya Angelou is uh, affect her poetry uh, has affected me very deeply, you know not just that poem Still I Rise, but uh, uh, many of her, her other works as well, and you know what? I think I'm, I, I want to keep the flame lit under her memory somehow. You know, so I'm going to put that in the the the, the title, the, the the poem title is such a strong, uplifting title. You know, yeah. it, you know. So I said that's that's the name of the record. Boom. And then um, uh, another tune that I developed at the last minute for the recording was uh, Melody for Trayvon. And I said, you know what? I want to in in on the heels of Still I Rise. I want to keep the fire lit under uh, Trayvon Martin's uh, name as well, and that whole incident that happened surrounding uh, his murder. You know, and yeah. so um, uh, so I, I so it started to take on uh, like uh, something that was politically based as well. In order to say, you know, uh, jazz jazz music uh, is also a reflection of the times, gotcha. you know? and uh, and that's the stuff that we, you know, I really feel like that's the stuff that we should be writing about now. That's the stuff that keeps jazz music alive, or well, music right. in general alive. You got to write about something, you know, and especially exactly. especially the stuff that's going down now, you know, with mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter and with this uh, election. Uh, coming up uh, in the states is so so important, and right, right. Uh, so yeah, I, so yeah, so I wanted to make a political statement uh, with this record as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. I know some artists kind of try to shy away from that, so I commend you for doing that. You know, it's, it's not it's not. An, uh, I, I guess it, it can be a scary thing because then you wonder. I know some people get concerned. And I'm trying to figure out how to say this. <laughs> some people get concerned about like. Oh, my fans might think this about me and, you know, something like that, you know, but I I say, you know, the the truth has to come out, you know, and it's going to come out. (laughs) At some point in time, you got to, you got to grow a spine. Right. (laughs) You know, (laughs) you know, you got to, you know, your your spine has got to take, change color from yellow to the color it's supposed to be, you know? (laughs) uh, So, um. Now you know, and and that's and and you know, especially you talk about in the in the entertainment industry. You know, you you know, you you're trying to be you know, like, I guess politically correct. You don't want to hurt, you don't want to offend anybody. This that and the other. But at the same time, you have you do have to be, uh, you have to satisfy satisfy your own creativity and your own beliefs. Exactly. And um, and with those with those two tunes in particular, that's that's what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, yeah. So. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a, so I'm, I'm very, very proud of those, of, of, of not just those two, those two tunes, but in combination with everything else as well. Yeah, man. Cause I, I heard that it's like the, the writing was, uh, everything was phenomenal. I loved everything. Yeah, I mean, oh, know. thank you. Thank yeah. you. Man. Thank yeah. you. Uh-huh. <laughs> thank you, man. Yeah. And I got, you know, I got to say something, man, you know, um, 
really along those lines, you know, um, the, uh, the it was such a surprise when when uh, my publicist uh, uh, told me about this interview and that and who was doing the interview. I said, "Tell Yokely, man, that's my boy. That's my man from Michigan State. Are you kidding me? I know him." And so, yeah, yes, yeah. he's with uh, with Oki Magazine. I said. I've never heard of this magazine. I had never heard of it before. How, how long has the magazine been been established? It's been established for a while. It got recently taken over or uh, by uh, a friend of mine, David Emmanuel Noel, and uh, another friend, Mark uh, Voldary. I hope I'm not butchering his name. I feel bad, Mark. If you <laughs> anyway, uh -huh. he'll, he'll give me, he'll give me later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, or maybe I can edit it out the video and then put it. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. We they took it over, I believe, um, maybe sometime last year. And then I, I, I was kind of hesitant to be honest, just because uh, you know it's uh, you know being a, a full time musician, you kind of yeah. wonder how you're going to balance it out. But then like the COVID hit, and I was like, that seems like the perfect time to take on a new endeavor. And I, I have to say, I'm really enjoying it because uh, I, I can still do my music, and then it gives me a chance to shine the light on some of my colleagues, such as yourself. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. It, no, it's very nice. <laughs> well, I certainly appreciate that. And I and I looked and I, I looked up the magazine online mm -hmm. and, and I saw that there were a, a lot of black writers uh involved in the mm -hmm. magazine. And as and you know, and I was just having a discussion with another uh great friend of mine, uh um jazz musician, uh was saying uh, you know, there are no uh there there it's like maybe a handful of black writers of this of, of jazz music. And you might have a, a few fingers left over, you know. Right. Yeah, you know, exactly. Before yeah. I found out about y'all, you know, I'm thinking I was thinking firstly of like Stanley Stanley Crouch, you know, and um, but I don't know of any other black writers, and I, and this is important. Not anything against against writers of of other ethnic, ethnicities, but yes. you know, jazz is African American music, and you have you you have to have an African American perspective on this. On the music that we're that that's being performed, you exactly. know. So uh, so I I applaud I applaud you all with this magazine, man. Thank you, thank you, man. Yeah, we're yeah. we're trying to make it take off. You know, we've, we've been working hard at it, and uh, hopefully we'll we'll get to some new heights with it. You know. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So we're we're plugging away at it, and so you know, hopefully we'll get some more great interviews like yourself and we'll <laughs> <keep> along. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah. So how how long did it take you to finish this project? I'm curious. Um, well, uh, as, as far as the uh, recording uh, process, it took us the rehearsal and the recordings took us a, a total of five days, mm -hmm. and we rehearsed for three days and uh, then recorded for two days, uh -huh. and um, and then by the time we you know then we go into post production after that, and that took uh, you know maybe a next few months or so maybe three months or so of, of, of post-production you know i did it you know uh piecemeal when i had the time to you know because uh, i was still teaching you know during that part of the school year uh -huh. and um so we got it all we got it all finished up by the time i had the printed cd by around uh maybe uh, the second week in june i believe okay and uh so it was uh so we have it ready for a um for a, a, a mid mid July release, you know, but uh, but we got it we got it together relatively fast as far as like the uh, the uh, pre production, you know, all the all the tracking and everything, you know, that was uh, that came together, you know, rather quickly in a, in a very professional manner because that's how you know for a jazz record you ain't got but you know you might only have one day of recording now, you know, because <laughs> right. uh, back when I was in back when I was in New York back in the nineties. You know, they would. You know, a, a, a lengthy recording session was two days. You yeah. know, two maybe eight to twelve hour days, and uh, then you got the record. But now I'm hearing stories of man, yeah, we got one day, maybe maybe six hours. <laughs> you know, I was like, whoa, <laughs> wow, <Like me. laughs> yeah, right, in and out, bam, one take, next, you know, yeah. and so uh, and and so we we I got a chance to really take our time with the recording and get it. Uh, and get it done. We we had uh, 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 about two or three of the tunes we were able to do in one in one take, mm -hmm. and uh, you know of course some of the harder tunes we you know took 
uh, maybe two and three takes of those tunes, but it wasn't uh, but collectively it wasn't a lot of takes of each of the tunes, you know. So okay. It really came together. Everybody was very professional, and very uh, focused, and in order to get the uh, get the uh, the end product, you know, get a solid end product, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, nice, nice, man. Yeah. yeah. And uh, how long was the, the writing process for you? Because I'm curious, like, it, you know, we're both composers. And I wonder how my other colleagues, t- you know, how do they help with their processes for producing this stuff? Uh, it, uh, the writing process, you know, if I just, if, if I have nothing else to do but just sit down and write, and I don't even take, I mean, this is like, I leave the horn in the case. I don't even take the horn out to blow, no. you know. And yeah. uh, if, I, if I'm able to do that, then I can, I can, uh, I can churn out uh, a, a pretty like lengthy big band chart with all the bells and whistles, with everything included, you know, <laughs> and a, and a good maybe uh, maybe two to three weeks, I think, you know. I mean, this is like a, like like let's say like that that the first uh, selection on the on the record, uh, a push come to shove. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was, and, and that was an example of of, of this. Uh, I was able to write that in maybe a, maybe a couple of weeks, and uh, I wrote that you know a number of years ago, and when I was in Michigan State actually, oh, and okay. um, and and it was during the Christmas uh, holidays when I wrote that, and oh. so I didn't have anything anything else to do during that time. I just said I'm just going to write, and I and I wrote that tune in about a good a good two weeks. I was just just focused on that, you know. Right. Um, other tunes were kind of kind of piecemeal, you know, where you know you, you get an idea, you 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 blast it down on the score, and then I get stuck, and then I won't be able to think of anything. And I just have to put it away for a few days, or a couple of weeks, or a couple of months, a couple uh-huh. of years, <laughs> you know, and, <laughs> and then come back to it, you know, is like, oh yeah, I remember I was doing that, you know, and yeah. so so a lot of those, a lot of those tunes have have been uh, kind of uh, had been in a in a state of readiness for a number of years, uh-huh. and um, and then uh, um, and others, I was able to you know I was under the gun to fill in about four or five tunes for the record because because of the grant stipulations, I had to cut out uh, about four or five tunes, so I had to go ahead and start writing. And when I was focused on doing that, but well, I was really able to to get some to to get about. Those those four four or five charts uh, um, that I included, I was able to bang them out and get them and get them ready for the for the recording date. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's funny how how the stipulations or that kind of uh, those parameters can make you kind of you know put that pen down and start burning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good for me. It was really good because it got my it got my uh, creative juices going and and it and it and it re. Uh, Familiarize uh, my, uh, you know, uh, woke up my finale skills. You know, because <laughs> right, right, right. you, know, you know, finale, but you, if you don't, you're not constantly using it, but you lose it. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's so true. Yep, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, man. And then the final track on that one, uh, is it Heavens? I'm, I'm probably thinking of the cartoon Heavens to yeah, Murder. That's exactly it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. That was one of the runs I, that I that I um, that I wrote uh, um, uh, recent. That, that was like a recent addition to the record. It was one of the ones that I had to use as a uh, kind of one of the four tunes that I had to use as a, as a to complete the programming. So that that's a very new uh, composition uh-huh. uh, and uh, or a very new arrangement. I wrote the actual uh, uh, tune oh about maybe three years ago, and oh. I. Just, and I just wrote, you know, just wrote the melody out, you know, and read it with the chord changes, and just, and didn't do anything with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I said, you know, that would be slick to expand into a, a this big band arrangement. You know, let me go ahead and do that for the record, you know. Mm-hmm. And then once I did it, um, then I started turning it into this other thing with all these sound effects. Oh you know? yeah. And uh, when I found like a um, um, like the a cartoon. Uh, you know, I found the actual episodes of of uh, Snagglepuss. You know, uh, you know, saying <laughs> "Heavens to Murgatroyd" and everything. Blah blah. I had um, uh, a DJ uh, scratching it up. You know, and uh, and to to just kind of 
bring it in. I just wanted to have that 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 connection between uh, jazz and hip hop and and the possibilities of what can be done with uh, with the the, the hip hop scratching in an improvisatory type of uh, manner, you know. Oh. And, uh, so I had him do that, and um, um, and then um, I found like this. Uh, what is it called? Like a, a, a slapstick cartoon sounds kind of library, you mm-hmm. know. And I and, and I added all that stuff in there, and it was all like the the uh, uh, mimicking of those same uh, slapstick kind of sounds from those cartoons from back in the fifties and sixties, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I mean, you, you can by listening to that tune, you can tell what I was doing Saturday mornings when I was a little kid. Right, right. <laughs> so, it was Warner Brothers. It was Hanna Barbera. It was all of you know. I was, I was. Oh, yeah, 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 right. Barbera, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, he took it took it back there. <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah, these, these kids today they don't know nothing about no. Oh music. no, they don't know about this stuff. They don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that was what I mean. I liked all of them, but that one I was like, oh man, this is this is taking me back. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was slick how you worked it in the sound effects and with with the the whole arrangement. I'm like, man, that's that's gotta be that's that's on another level. <laughs> oh man, yeah. It was, and that was that was a lot of fun, man. Um, you know, just trying to figure out all the possibilities of how to do it. You know, and even how we re- how we recorded that that track. Um, mm-hmm. we had to put it. Uh, uh, Curtis had to play to a click track. Oh, okay. Uh, with that whole thing in order for it to sync up with the, uh, the, 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 um, we had this, there was this one, uh, uh, a loop that we used and, uh, that it was kind of like this mechanical kind of sounding with these, uh, bells and chimes in it and everything. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it was slower than the tempo that I wanted to take it. And so I had my engineer, um, uh, you know, sample it, and then he sped it up to the tempo that I wanted to take it, and it was about maybe 170 or something. And so um, I had Curtis uh, play to a click track of 170, and 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 lay it down for us, you know. And then we we played the arrangement. Told we recorded the arrangement straight without any of the sounds, of course. And okay. uh, to that to to Curtis, and he was he had the headphones on, listening to the click track. And then we went back, and then we were able to add. Layer the uh, that 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 uh, mecha- that uh, kind of mechanical loop thing with the chimes and everything on top of that exactly to the 170 and to the click track and it and it fit and then everything else was just laid on laid on top of that you know uh, it didn't follow didn't have to follow the click track you know but uh, and so everything else was kind of used more ornamentally you know oh, nice. or kind of Im- improvisationally of sorts and even the the engineer. Got a chance to kind of show off his improvisational chops and say, "Let's put it here. Let's put that there. Let's kind of throw that there. No, we can put this over here." You know, so it was kind of a uh, like kind of we're piecing together a puzzle. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It <laughs> oh, was man. Yeah, it is. I love. I loved it, man. That was. That was very. Maybe my, my little one. She liked the sounds too. Yeah. So. Oh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh man. Yeah. And, uh, so so let me ask. Uh, I know we're in the middle of like still recovering. And we may be going to keep recovering from this pandemic. Uh, what, what are your plans for the project? Or maybe, maybe uh, what were your plans prior to COVID? And COVID hit. Did you have to like kind of shift stuff around? You know. Uh, no, actually, uh, COVID didn't affect the recording itself because we we recorded it right before the the pandemic was was announced. Uh, okay. We recorded it at like the the first week. The first week in January is when we recorded, okay. and so. Uh, so once we had it like down um uh, down on tape, you know, figuratively, you know, uh it you know, all we had to do was just, you know, go in and do the uh the editing and the mixing and stuff like that, you know. Um and so we were good to, you know, this is like one of the um this is like one of the last uh kind of studio recordings prior to COVID. You know, yeah. think, you know, <laughs> It's kind of historical in that in that effect, you know. We might, I hope, you know, this is not the last studio recording of humanity that you know going forward. Um, but um, it did affect uh, a uh, touring schedule that I had set up for the band because uh, as part of 
the uh, as part of one of the grants that I received, uh, two of the grants that I received had a touring component to it, and um, and so uh, I had a number of Canadian jazz festivals that were that were uh, set up as 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 a tour, and then you know all of them had to cancel because of the because of the pandemic. Gotcha. And, so I'm hoping that uh, that 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 touring money will also be available to me uh, next summer. Because I'm hoping by next summer this whole thing will be cleared up. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Oh man. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I mean, I, I know I was supposed to be out on the West Coast, and then like you know, this thing hit and it was done. So I'm just kind of interested to see how people are like uh, maneuvering through the, the the land the landmines that have been placed by this thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a few gigs that are starting to kind of open up here a little bit here in Winnipeg that I, I've I've done about uh, maybe three or four gigs in the last month or so, mm-hmm. and um, or maybe a month and a half or so. And so, it, but it's slowly kind of opening up. But they they they're still kind of walking on eggshells, you know, to making sure that uh, they don't open up too fast, you know, with as far as like the live live uh, entertainment. Right. Yeah, yes. yeah. They started. I think in New York they're still not doing it, or maybe they are doing it. Maybe just I know live streaming, but I don't know if they have any uh, audiences yet per se. Them, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it might be. I think this is like the year that everyone takes off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so it's, it's interesting times. Yeah. Um, I also want to ask, this is a big band album, um, and it seems like uh, maybe around 2010, maybe. I, I'm kind of trying to remember back in my mind. Like, I, I know Orrin had started his big band, and then there was a couple, like, all these big bands that started. Do you feel like it's making a resurgence, or do you feel like it, the, the resurgence kind of happened and it might be going down? Or What, what, what are your take on, on the current state of, of big band in the music right now? Uh, there's not a lot of... Uh big bands uh that are currently uh, uh active um you know of course uh Count Basie Orchestra is still very active uh with a with an international touring schedule uh Duke Ellington Orchestra mm-hmm. um, um oh the uh the band out on the west couple of bands on the west coast um the Clayton Hamilton uh, uh jazz orchestra uh-huh. And the uh, I guess uh, the Gordon Goodwin, uh, big fat band, you know, uh, and uh, and I know those four uh, bands. I can oh, I, I guess you might as well include uh, um, uh, Glenn Miller mm-hmm. and Tommy Dorsey. I think yeah. those, those so that's about that's six big bands. I think that you can kind of put your hand on that have uh, maybe somewhat of a. At least a at least a national uh, touring schedule, and and you know the 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 bigger names, of course, have like international uh, touring schedules. But um, there's not, yeah. It, I think there is like a a a a, 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 res, a resurgence as far as like the musicians, you know, uh, creating uh, uh, those opportunities for themselves. You know, I would be in in that in that category. Uh, creating like a, a, a big a big band opportunity or or outlet for musicians to be able to to perform and um, on like a on a on a on a level that is uh, where we're where we're playing uh, new music that's added to the repertoire you know right. and uh, you might as well even include like bands like um, uh, the Thad Jones well not Thad Jones Mill Lewis but the Vanguard band. Uh, Vanguard Jazz Orchestra, and uh, and you know they are. Uh, you might even be considered like more of a, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, they could they could kind of be considered a rep uh, not a, well not a repertory band, but they do the they do the repertory of, of Thad Jones, right, Thad right. Jones <laughs> and, and Bob Brookmeyer and uh, a few others that were contributing to the uh, the book during that time. But they have ventured off into um, other arrangers that have come for us. I think like Jim McNeely, I think did uh, or did a um, uh, um, an albums worth of stuff for maybe one or two albums worth. And I think they did musical slide Hampton and 
a uh, number of things. So they ventured out, you know, beyond uh, Thad Jones, of course, you know, in order to just keep their thing fresh and new, you know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, and I know there are a number of there are a number of rehearsal bands uh, all over all over North America. Um, here in Winnipeg, there are about uh, at least in, in, including the Big Dig band that I that I lead. Uh, there are probably another, about four other uh, uh, big bands that are established here, and out in out in uh, Calgary, in the province of Alberta, they have a whole big band uh, community. They have about thirty big bands out there. Oh, nice! It, it is is really is, is incredible, man. It, they have literally like thirty big bands. All like the all of the you know local musicians and the band directors and everything. They all playing these bands you know and um and of course some of them are kind of moonlighting in in other bands as well you know but uh but yeah but they have a whole big band culture out there and mm -hmm. it's very very active and uh it's it's mind boggling I mean, you have 30 well what city, what city do you know has like about 30 local big bands <laughs> you know not even, I don't think, yeah, exactly. like new york yeah. new york doesn't have that you know <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that is, 30. wow that's that's kind of amazing yeah 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 i might be able to count like the number of big bands in in, in the city on on two hands and maybe maybe another one maybe three hands total i don't know but not yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it's something man it is something oh. Yeah, yeah. Because I remember, yeah, I know Orrin had did his, and then there was, uh, I mean, there was always the the uh, uh, RH Big Band, uh, uh, Roy Hargrove's Big Band, Roy and, uh, you yep. know, rest in peace. You know that. Uh, hopefully, they continue that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just it's, it's kind of interesting how it, it seemed like there was like this movement of big bands for a minute, but now I don't hear of anyone starting them up. Out. So yeah. when he came out with this record, I was like, oh man, someone someone's keeping the good fight going, you know? Yeah, you got to man, you got to man. Even uh, it was, it was uh, Christian McBride. I think he's got he's got That's a, right. a yes, couple yes. of big band uh, recordings out, and and even the uh, uh, Ralph Peterson did that. Uh, Tribute to uh, R. Blakey, that big band. Uh, yes, uh -huh. that was out last year, mm -hmm. and uh, so yeah, the the big band culture is still very much alive, mm -hmm. and the blood flow of those bands, out of, of course, the musicians, and you got uh, hordes of musicians that are uh, available and ready to play in those bands, you know, and and any one of those bands can be elevated to uh, an international touring status, you know, people like. Uh, uh, Christian McBride's band, uh, he certainly has like the 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 name to be able to uh, warrant take uh, uh, the the financing of that band to take them on some type of a, of a tour, yeah. And, and that's where musicians make their money, you know, right. uh, on, on those you know on those on those, on those tours, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, so yeah, it's it's alive and well, and uh, you know people. We have to keep this thing. We have to keep the big band culture alive, you know, because you know it's not the, uh, it's not something that you, that you should just throw away because it, it, it is because it's so much tied to, like the swing era, exactly. You know? And uh, there are bands that are, you know, that's what everybody thinks of when you think, when you think of the big bands, the swing era. But there are we have to keep the more, uh, uh, the the more creative side of of, of big band culture alive you know because as you, you know as people may know that the, the swing the swing era was more conducive to to dancing you know mm -hmm. which yep. is a uh and then but when you talk about uh some of the more uh modern big bands they're more conducive to to listening mm -hmm. you know? and so um and and that's like that's what you that's what, what people would do at a at a uh they go to a uh uh, symphonic orchestra. Uh, when you go to see the symphony orchestra play, they're not getting up in the aisles and dancing. You know, yeah. they're listening. <laughs> you yeah, know, exactly, exactly, they're yeah. listening, man. You know, and yeah. so the, the 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 big band is our symphony orchestra for jazz. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, so that's why you know some you know that's why there's some pieces you know that might go for like ten. 12 minutes, 13 minutes. I got my one piece, of, uh, two, three of my pieces on there. Are like one, well, The first piece is like 14 minutes long. 
yeah, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> but it goes by, it has, it has that energy, so it don't even feel that long. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, but, you know, when you're writing, when, you, when, you're, when you're writing and, you know, and you're just in, inspired to, to, to write, you know, you just you gotta write until the pen runs out of ink. You know, right. until and you gotta, <laughs> if you ain't finished with that piece, you gotta fill the ink back up. You know, and finish <laughs> out the store, and then voila, that's what you have. And uh -huh. boom, one, two, one, two, three, four, bam! I see you at the end. You know, <laughs> and, um, and next thing you know, the piece is thirteen, fourteen minutes long. You know, yeah. And the thing is that you know, and like what you said, you said it doesn't feel like it's fourteen minutes long, but then when once you look at the running time, you're like, man, that was a fourteen minute long thing, you know. Yeah. And uh, so yeah, some you know, it, big band music really covers uh, quite the gamut, you know, of of being able to dance to it, and also being able to just sit back and listen to it and just hear the musicality in it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and I think it's uh, hopefully something that will continue to be done, uh, you know, in the educational thing. And then also on the scene, because, you know, I mean, that's how the music really started before small group. I think everyone kind of maybe seems to forget that and put the emphasis on, on you know, small group and, and soloing rather than, you know, yeah. this experience that is, is a very rich one. I think for both the players and, and then um, and then for the audience, well, you know, having that power of, of, of you know, it was like a 13, 14, uh, I'm forgetting the, the amount of horns, but you know, the, the amount of horns and, and the thing, and then the rhythm section, you know, it's a yeah. very, very um, thrilling experience, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course it is, you know. And uh, yeah, I still remember that arrangement you did on Dance Cadavers. Well, the, the Wayne Shorter tune, boy. Well, you you still you you, you put everybody everybody's eyes on blast. Everybody was like, "Oh, wait a minute, what is this?" You know? Oh man, oh. bad arrangement, boy. Oh, man, I'm hoping to record it one day, man. I really oh yeah, do. yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm actually hopefully I'll get some time uh, to get some other stuff written. I haven't done. I did the last album I did was for like uh, my group and then Wind Ensemble. So now I'm gonna try to get back ah. to the big band stuff. Yeah. Nice, nice, very nice. Yeah, and actually, I have your 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 dad to think that that time he subbed for you at Michigan State, and he told me one of my tunes sound like Wayne Shorter. He he set me down the path of being a Wayne head. <laughs> ah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. He's been, he's been, oh yeah, he he did the same to me. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, hit me yeah, hit me, the, hit me the Clifford Brown. I was like, oh, Clifford. Wow, okay. It was back in the day, you know, and I was. I was a bit trying to learn blues walk and, and joy spring and all the tunes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we, got, we got to get an interview with him. That's, that's I just said it popped in my mind. We should do a bit interview with your old man, man. That'd oh, he'd love that. He would love yeah. that. Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, that would be good for him technology wise because he's not hip to this, all this video conferencing and everything. He got to be brought into the 21st century. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, maybe I'll take a trip to Chicago. You know, I haven't, I haven't had uh, the deep dish in a while. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> oh man. Well, I don't want to take too much of your time, man. But uh, I just want to say, man, I'm, I'm so happy you did this. And, um, I'm gonna probably listen to it here uh, when I'm doing some work around the house. It's, it's a oh, killer. Man. Um, for the 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 people watching this, uh, where can they get the album, and where how, and where can they find you, like your website and uh, social media and all these things? Uh, you can find it at all of the uh, the online downloading uh, stores, uh, like at iTunes, uh, Amazon Music. Uh, was it Google? What's it called? Google Play? Is that is that the? Uh, um, I think so. Uh, yeah, Google Play. Another one, I or a, a tent, tender or tent, a tender or something like that. I'm, I'm, There's so many of them out there. <laughs> yeah, there's so many of them out there. I, 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 I forget. No, tender is a that's a dating site. No, don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and, uh, people might buy it. You never know. <laughs> hey, you know. That might be something. That might be an untapped market. Maybe I should join the dating sites and just blast my CD up there. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Oh, man. Right. <laughs> uh, I also created um, an uh, an album website uh, strictly for specifically for this uh, record called uh, Still I Rise Album dot com, and that was like the genius of the guy that did my uh, graphic design for the um, for the physical CD, and we were going to put 
you know, when you download music, uh, you don't get any of the liner notes or anything like that, you know. And we were talking about like an online kind of like a PDF download of the liner notes that they could be able to get. And he said, you know, instead of that, why don't you just create a online website? Mm. Said, wow. Okay. So, so that's what he did. He created an online website, and it's basically a, a you know online version of the of the liner notes from the CD. And you scroll down, and it has all the information, and even has like samples of each track on there that you can check out. Uh, but it's is really very very nicely done, and uh, so it's like still I rise album dot com. So you can taste test all the tracks before you uh, go to go to to buy the record. You know, and you don't have to, you don't have to buy the whole record. You can just buy one track if you like one track, and if you, you like all the tracks, go ahead and just download the whole thing. You know, and um, uh, I'm trying to think of anywhere else. I think that's yeah. I think that's uh, and all over social media. I'm, I'm uh, um, all of my stuff is on uh, Facebook uh, and Twitter and Instagram, mm -hmm. and I think those are the main three. Uh, I think oh, YouTube is on everything's on YouTube as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I have three videos on uh, 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 three feature tunes from the record on um, uh, Melody for Trayvon. Uh, four videos actually. I'm sorry. Uh, the making of of the record Still I Rise, um, which is like a, about a 40 minute video. Um, uh, still at the title track Still I Rise, Melody for Trayvon, and Soulful, uh, Soulful Brother Gillespie. Oh no, no, we didn't do Soulful Brother Gillespie. Uh, um, oh, Heavens to Murgatroyd. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did a video on, on Heavens to Murgatroyd. Uh -huh. And so uh, all of those are on. Uh, on YouTube. Oh, nice. Okay, dig, dig. So, yeah. so you're out there for people to check you out. That's great. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's right. And, That's right. And if you all ever get up to uh, to Winnipeg, uh, check check out uh, Professor Garner at University of Manitoba. That's correct, right? University That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Come in and say hello. <laughs> and, grab, and for the musicians, grab some lessons. Yeah. Good. Right. Right. You know, a number a number C seven. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, so, man, it's so good to, to talk to you again, man. Uh, thank you for doing the interview for Oki Magazine, and uh, we wish you the best of luck with the album. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much. It's been very enjoyable, man. It's just so great to chop it up with you again, man. After all these years, man, and and I hope we get to hope we get to to chop it up on the bandstand sometime soon. Yes, yes, yeah. most definitely. I was thinking the yeah. same thing. You know, hopefully we'll we'll do a collaboration soon. <laughs> yeah, that'd be very cool. Very cool. Uh, thank you again, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Appreciate it.